fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics. Your book is Fiscal Policy, or essay, is Fiscal Policy Under Low Interest Rates. And your fundamental uh, tenet is that debt, debt when used properly, is, is a good thing. I guess the problem is too many people don't actually use it as a good thing. Right. Right, exactly. And there's always the risk that it is overused and used badly. But the argument is, is that uh, if interest rates return to low levels after we've finished the fight against inflation, which will come, uh, I think, within a year or two, then I think interest rates will be very low. And when interest rates are very low, then it makes sense to actually use fiscal policy and possibly deficits and possibly debt uh, to do useful things. There is more room to play with than most people believe. So I think the big question is, you know, what happens to interest rates uh, looking uh, a few years out? And that's clearly the, one of the big questions uh, that I have to deal with in my book. Right. So if you take a terminal rate of, say, 5% in the US, where does it fall back to? Where do you see the long-term rate in the US? So I, I think in terms of real rates, right, rates adjusted for inflation. And so before the COVID, they were uh, on the order of minus one, minus two percent. Uh, and the question is, where do, where do we go back to? So for the moment, clearly the, the rates are higher, the nominal rates are higher, but inflation is higher. So even the real rates are not terribly high for a time at which we are really fighting inflation uh, by uh, tightening monetary policy. But the question is, project yourself, you know, a year or two out, where do we go uh, back to? And I think we go back to something like what we had before, which is very low nominal rates and very low real rates. And if I'm right, then this is an environment in which monetary policy will be constrained again, uh, in not in tightening, we can tighten easily, but in helping, and where there is more of a role for, for fiscal policy. We saw fiscal policy come in direct conflict with monetary policy in the, in the UK during the Liz Truss fiasco at the end of last year. Um, now, we don't want to get into the, the, the UK political merits, but we've seen time and again governments trying to push against what central banks are doing. Yes, I mean, there is no question that, uh, that there was a bomb in the UK a, a few months back. I think the reason was not that uh, Ms. Truss was uh, pushing for a deficit. It was more of a notion that she didn't know what she was doing. My sense is that, and we've seen this during the COVID crisis, the markets have given a pass uh, to fiscal policy where it was used for the right things, mainly in Europe to protect people against the very high gas prices, for example, or electricity prices. In that case, I think the markets realized that there was enough room to do right. it, and it would be a good thing to do. But if you do something irresponsible, then the markets will react, and they did, right? We're going to get to a position probably later this year, arguably next year, next year probably, where central banks are going to have to decide, do they, I mean, well, they've, they've said they're going back to 2% as being right. the, uh, the target rate. Uh, there will be a moment where people will say, well, three's not bad. We're close enough. We can pivot. Do you buy that? I buy that as a discussion which will surely take place. I mean, suppose that a year or a year and a half from now, we're down to, say, 3% uh, in the U.S., and the Fed says, well, we're not at 2%. You know, we have to actually tighten uh, credit. We have to decrease uh, growth in order to get from 3 to 2. I think there will be a very serious discussion. People will say, are we really ready to have maybe even a recession in order to get to 2? So I think the issue will come up. And what I've argued is that, again, ignoring the political economy of it, which is very important, is that 3% is a perfectly reasonable and actually desirable number rather than 2 and the reason for this is, I mean, there are many reasons, but one of them is that if you have inflation running on average at 3%, then you have nominal rates, at dollar rates at, you know, 3 to 4. And the room that monetary policy has to play with is slightly bigger. It can decrease the rates from 4 to 0, right. um, where if we had 2, then it only can only decrease the rates from 3 to 0. So I think it gives a bit more room for monetary policy to help 
when needed, and therefore net less need for fiscal policy to help. So I'm pushing the idea that three uh, percent is a better target. At this stage, I think the central bank should be silent about this. They should say first we get to free, <laughs> and then we'll see what we do. I don't think it would be wise to have that debate in central banks at this point. But I just wanted to raise the issue. And the, uh, yesterday, uh, in his Rick's bank speech, uh, Jay Powell, I mean, he didn't, you, he did exactly, he didn't go down the monetary policy road, but he did say central bankers must not become political in the sense of allowing the agenda, climate, all these other issues that are now part of central bankers' remit or self-appointed remit. Very different what he said to the way Christine Lagarde views it at the ECB. I was I was very happy with uh, Jay Paul's speech. I think that you know central banks cannot do everything. Uh, they can do something which is, and it's not easy, but it can kind of slow down the economy, accelerate the economy, control the inflation rate, and even then, we know that it's not so easy, and they don't do a great job, but they do the best they can. Now, when you task them with other things, uh, income distribution, global warming, and so on, it, it is just not what they are supposed to do. So within their remit, to the extent that it's relevant, they should take it into account. But I fully agree with, with Jay that it's a good thing to focus on what their main mandate is, which is keep inflation low and make sure the economy is as close as, bottom, as possible to potential. I, w I was very happy with that speech. Olivia, it's good to see you, sir. I'm grateful. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.